Absolutely, Ben. So thanks for having me. I think uh, when we look at the charts that you were just showing, there, there's a lot going on and kind of a lot to like, I would say, about macro variables for the market. And when I look at macro variables, what I like is the stability, right? So you talk about interest rates, uh, you zoom that chart out, it doesn't feel like it's a tight range from 4.1 to 4.6, 4.7, but that's a relatively tight range for 10-year uh, yields, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. compared to what we saw in 22, 23. Uh, the dollar has been relatively stable, though, you know, something of an uptrend this year, but um, relatively stable. And inflation, like you noted, um, you know, we got that inflation pop in the first quarter. Um, we were noting that there's some seasonality to inflation. The January number was lighter than the January previously. The February was lighter than the February previously. Um, and the likelihood is, is that we are back into this kind of disinflationary camp. So uh, stability in macro variables with a little side of disinflation is not necessarily a bad thing for markets. You use the word uh, stability, I would argue balance, another word, right, that uh, one could argue has helped this market. And, you know, as we headed into this week, there was some uncertainty in terms of what the dot plot would present. The Fed now looking more like one versus three. But I feel like as we see inflation coming down, they're gaining credibility. Uh, and that also seems to be kind of supporting the market. Absolutely. And I think we all need to remember it's the market that has gotten the Fed wrong <laughs> through this cycle. So the market's constantly been uh, uh, expecting more cuts than the Fed's delivering. Their guidance has been flexible, but that's been more the thing to follow. And now they've changed kind of their dot plot. It hasn't changed by a lot. They could still go twice this year, but uh, but it is looking like potentially one cut this year, maybe no cuts if real final demand remains uh, positive throughout the year. And again, I would underscore kind of you, you noted in the segment before that the market seems to be kind of ignoring this push off of rate cuts. And I would argue that um, stability is what's more important. Mm -hmm. uh, Fed policy rate where it is, if we can continue to produce economic growth, positive earnings, I think that's a decent backdrop. You know, um, kind of along these same lines, I feel like the market has had, uh, or the Fed, I should say, has had a very steady, eddy approach towards all this versus the speculatory environment that you mentioned. Again, the market really got caught up in kind of the throes of. But uh, along those same lines, I mean, um, the market doesn't seem to be too concerned about the pushback on some of those rate cuts, right, as tech and the AI narrative has driven uh, most of it higher here. Um, but also, again, kind of just adding to that point, as I mentioned before, it really seems pretty content with the fact that we've seen peak rates as back in October, right? We're not necessarily concerned about revisiting those levels right now. Absolutely. I think that's one of the most important points we can make is if the last hike is in, which seems to be the case, that tends to mean that the peak in longer term yeah. rates is in. Um, and that's kind of what the market is pricing. Okay, so worst case scenario for 10 year might be 4.7 or something like that. Um, and I think that's the, the piece that has been taken positively from the market. You know, and uh, dollar rates, I mean, everything else aside, uh, the Fed, um, as you noted here, this is a bull market that's currently supported by improving corporate fundamentals. Absolutely. Look, uh, valuations are stretched. I don't think anybody's going to come on your show and say valuations look cheap. Um, valuations are stretched, but that's not abnormal at this stage of the cycle. What you need to see, though, is the baton needs to be passed from higher valuations to improving funda right. fundamentals. And that seems to be the case. So I mentioned all that stability in the macroeconomic uh, variables. That is also helpful for um, profit growth uh, for, for corporations. And that's what we kind of see through the back end of this year is a bull market that is supported by improvement in fundamentals rather than uh, valuation expansion. Lastly, just a thought on, uh, you know, there was some concern associated with the rally that we had seen uh, into the end of last year, I feel like, associated with MAG7, beginning of this year, really the focus kind of shifted back over towards AI and this uh, really tech driven rally has, has fueled things. Again, strength in the U.S. economy as well, been a backdrop, which I think has helped support it. But uh, it sounds to me like, again, you want to see a bit more of a broad-based kind of participation to really kind of solidify this move at this point. We always want to see broad participation. I mean, among individual stocks, sectors, global markets, we're generally getting that on a global scope right now. Uh, individual sectors are generally moving higher. There's been some cracks in that 
uh, more recently, but you always want to see a broadening out. Now, look, I mean, I think we need to uh, recognize the difference. A lot of the charts that show that NVIDIA has made up half the gains in the market, you know, I'm kind of uh, making that up, but there's a lot of uh, charts out there where people are arguing that the breadth is not good because of leadership from the mega caps. And we need to separate that out. I mean, when you expect when large cap companies are performing well, yes, they're going to be driving a lot of the return, but we need to look underneath the surface and are the other, is the rising tide rising all boats? We have seen some cracks in that lately, Ben, and that's something to watch. But indeed, we want to see a good broad uh, bull market. Tony, with the lion's share of the data behind us in the rearview mirror right now, when you're looking at some of the most recent inflation figures, the Fed decisions, policy uh, decisions globally this week, for that matter, and uh, uh, some of the jobs reports that we've seen uh, last week, most recently non-farm payrolls, where's your focus as we kind of look and try and gauge when that rate cut eventually does come and uh, uh, how we're uh, faring in terms of those efforts to uh, tame inflation and uh, make some progress? I think we got to look at the Fed's dual mandate. So you you take a look at the inflation picture. It's going to be a challenge for them to hit their newly revised projection for PCE. And like Chair Powell noted, uh, there's some base effects that are unfavorable coming up into the next readings. I think you need to average something like a 0.16, 0.18 on core PCE for the rest of the year in order to just hit their revised target. So that's going to be a challenge um, through the end of the year. On the employment picture, we need to watch and see what's the what's the kind of the continual rebalance of the labor market. Is are things actually softening to a point that we need to have some concerns in the labor market? That doesn't seem to be the case right now. And historically, when when profits are growing, companies aren't conducting mass layoffs. But that's something that we're going to be watching: is that health of the labor market. We really do need to um, kind of pay attention to the dual mandate at this point. Investors definitely seem to be focusing on the positive, discounting the negative still. I feel like that's also helped things. Uh, and there's lots of positives to focus on out there as well. Just kind of to your point here, uh, jobless claims this week holding below 250,000, inching up ever so slightly. But that's kind of a psychological threshold and maybe even more so 300K, you know, which is well out there still, uh, well off the out in the horizon here, nowhere near that at this point. So uh, multiple positives, again, to focus on. Tony, appreciate you sharing part of your Friday with us. It's